Thanks everyone for tuning in to Let's Talk Money. Right after the union budget, our focus is simple. What should your savings and investment strategy be this year? Keeping in mind some of the key announcements of the union budget 2016. Now the most positively received announcement was the government's intention to adhere to the fiscal deficit target of 3.5% in 2016-17. Almost everyone is speaking of a rate cut now. We are asking the experts today, how will this affect stocks and the debt market? And should you be looking at certain kind of investments more than others? The other second big headline, the huge controversial announcement of taxing 60% of employees provident fund corpus at withdrawal was really actually meant to nudge people towards looking at another long-term pension product, the National Pension System or NPS, where now with this union budget, 40% withdrawal on maturity has been made tax-free. Today we'll decode NPS for you and get the panel to tell us whether NPS makes sense for building a retirement kitty for you. My guest today, Navneet Munod, CIO, SBI Mutual Fund. Also with me here in the Delhi studio, Krishan Malotra, National Practice Head Tax, Shardol Amarchand Mangaldas and Co. And Amit Kukreja, Founder of Wealth Being Advisors. Now, let's begin with the fiscal deficit target. Navneet, my first question to you is, I think the whole cheer in the stock markets and the bond markets, both markets reacted extremely positively to this announcement that we will meet 3.9% fiscal deficit target for this year and next year 3.5%. Decode this for us in terms of what is going to happen now to my mutual fund portfolio. Where should I be putting money? If my SIPs, SIPs continue and I have some bulk, how would you distribute it for me? So to make good returns on asset classes like equity and bonds over a longer period, one of the most important thing is to have a stable macroeconomic environment in the country. And for that, the important things are fiscal prudence and a good monetary policy framework. In last two or three, two, two and a half years, we have seen that the government is very committed to create the foundation for a sustained growth, uh, a kind of nice era, non-inflationary continued expansion. It also reduces our vulnerability on the global economy and global markets because the domestic savings improve if you have a stable macro environment. And I think in this very challenging global environment in the very distressed rural area, the stressed corporate balance sheet, banks balance sheet, there's a lot of clamor for government to spend its way out, I mean to promote the, to, to prop up the economy by spending more, but full credit to the government for adhering to the fiscal deficit target. I think the fiscal prudence, the fiscal consolidation will go a very long way in creating a structural foundation for a sustained growth, which augurs well for both the equity market and the bond market. Along with all the other measures in terms of improving the ease of doing business, the simplification of tax laws, redressal mechanism, more spending on the rural area, particularly on the rural infrastructure side to create more jobs. I think that all will do well for the corporate profitability going forward. Taking some stress out of the banking sectors by some of the measures that have been announced by the RBI and the government will go a long way in, in, in removing the concerns. So I think both augur well and as you rightly mentioned, there is a possibility of an interest rate cut now because of the fiscal prudence. So I think it is good for both the markets. Both the markets. So, so, so he is not taking a call. <laughs> But tell me, I mean, sure. is this a time really to uh, look more at long-term debt funds, mutual funds, Amit? So, <clears throat> yes and no, right? Mm -hmm. So, interest rates are going to go down. So, obviously, long-term debt funds should not be our choice. We should stick to short and medium-term funds. Okay. So, if we apply the basics of financial planning, any money that you need in the next three to five years, you can park it in short and medium-term debt funds. Any money that you need after five years mm -hmm. can be parked in equity funds. Equity, given the lower rates, you know, in the coming times, will is likely to get into a better profitability, better returns on your equity. So, equity definitely holds a very good you know footing debt you so need to protect if I, your if money if i have some lump sum money and i would like to 
take it out at the end of three years, would your choice be uh, medium term debt funds? That's correct. I would stick to short and medium term short, debt funds. And short is what? The period is? Anywhere between one, 12 months to 18 months. 12 months to 18 months. All right. Now, what's the outlook on equity mutual funds? Uh, Navneet, I'm going to come back to you. Now, last one and a half years has been extremely disappointing. Everyone's sitting on a 10%, 7% to 10% to 15%, depending on the fund that they are, have been in. Uh, Going forward, what should the strategy be for investors who have been with equity funds? I mean, is SIP still the route to continue with or do you think this is the time that there is so much positivity around the economy, you could bump up your investments in equity funds? So those who have the SIP should surely continue. Those who don't have the exposure in equity should take advantage of the recent volatility and the uh, depressed market environment and increase the exposure to equities. I would argue in favor of a lump sum investment if your allocation to equities is less. And uh, I, I think those who, who have the money coming in in the next few months should at least start now and can gradually increase the exposure to equities. But at these levels, as you said, that in last one year markets have been down almost like 15% point to point, I think over the next 3 or 5 years equities can deliver decent double digit returns and I think it's a time to increase your allocation to equities. Amit, would you agree that you be brave, increase your uh, allocation to equity or do you think this is just a short term exuberance, global headwinds are still there, at the ground level cro corporate profitability, I mean with all that rural spending mm -hmm. uh, effect to actually happen, it's going to take a while for corporate profitability to increase. So, so are, are we, are you... I'll, I'll, still on one be, I'll still be cautious. Mm -hmm. So for me, SIP and STP is the preferred route any day. Second, if I need the money, so don't bump up equities don't bump up. right now. Don't, yes, don't do lump sum purchases. You mm -hmm. can bump up your SIP amount, okay. but don't do lump sum purchases. So lump sum, if you have short term debt into, fund, move it into debt fund and then do a periodic migration from debt to equity within okay. the same fund house. Okay. So do STPs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second, if you need the money between three and five years. Keep the money in low risk debt funds, don't put the money into equity funds because we saw the equity markets doing well and then we suddenly see, saw a lot of volatility in last 12 months. So you're saying only if you have a period of more than 5 years then you do a lump sum equity, otherwise stick to SIPs in equity and look at debt. Alright, I'm going to come to you because there are other things, takeaways uh, from the budget. now. Some of the provisions which were of course to tax the rich people earning more than rupees 1 crore will now have to pay an additional 3% surcharge on income tax. This means that the tax rate for the rich goes up from 12% to 15%. The second one, for those earning an annual dividend income of 10 lakh or more will be required to pay an additional tax of 10%. And finally, buying a luxury car costing upwards of 10 lakh rupees or purchasing goods and services in cash exceeding 2 lakh will now attract a TDS of 1%. So, Christian, just sum up this for you. It, it seems, you know, this, this whole um, government's intention to tax the rich is very noble, but then you only had 8, the numbers were very small of the people who actually declared tax over you are absolutely, just to so, add, mm -hmm. just to taking on the equity first, I would like to say that there was a big apprehension that the long term capital gain period from one year as it was expected may be extended to three years. That hasn't which happened. Which hasn't happened. So any investment which you would like to make, it's already there in the mind. And just to, just to uh, reaffirm that if you would see the earlier DTC, which was mm -hmm. direct tax code, where there was a very clear provision to say that there would not be any short and long. If you earn, you just pay the taxes. That was initially DTC plan. So you cannot rule out while making an investment, you uh, you have to uh, keep it in mind that you may not see the benefit of long term capital gain by the time your investment would be maturing after 3 to 5 years. So it is already there in the mind of the government. I thought just to be little oh. cautious <laughs> in terms of you may have to pay tax on the shares over a period of time, the way we have seen the rumor before and I think it is already going on okay, in the mind of the government. Don't, don't scare us and worry us about that, <laughs> that bit. Right? This year, it has not happened. It has okay, not happened. Fair That's enough. So, 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 in terms of, uh, you are right, your analysis is absolutely right, they wanted to tax rich people, but as far as the dividend is concerned, yes, those who are earning more than 10 lakhs, they would have to pay over and above 20 percent. Is a double taxation. It, it, Everyone's talking about it and saying this is unfair. Is it unfair? It is 
unfair because there was also a news that maybe they will remove the dividend distribution tax the one way because someone whose slab is 2 lakhs to a half lakh to 10 lakhs and someone who's earning more than 1 crore everyone was paying a dividend distribution tax through a company at the rate of 20% right. so there was a lack of It, you know equity so therefore in order to bring this gap one way was that they would have removed the dividend distribution tax which yes, was not that which so in order to tax now those who are having a high slab i think they thought it this let's make it if you are earning more than 10 lakhs so that you pay over and about 20% so, so there's no unfairness in it i think you know when they just i i've heard the number is 800 people who actually i don't know the number but they are not very big i mean the numbers are extremely small of people who really declared in comes of more than a crore amid navneet what's your opinion on on uh, the dividend tax i mean i think there has been quite a bit of unhappiness on that front but mutual funds dividends are still not taxed purely on a yeah so purely on a principle basis philosophically i mean it's a triple taxation where corporate pays full tax then on top of that you declare dividend you pay the dividend distribution tax and then when you receive the dividend again you pay tax so it's as you said it's not double it's almost triple so on a principal basis but i think the tax revenues had to be increased somewhere and i'm sure government would have thought about that where else the uh, uh, tax revenues can be increased and they found that this is probably the uh, impact in the least number of people and collect huge amount of money We'll be back in a moment to take a look at the largely ignored national pension system. That's uh, you know you got a tax benefit on it this time. Forty percent of the corpus that you withdraw out of NPS will be tax-free. Does it make sense for you to also look at NPS as a retirement saving investment? We'll be back. The huge uproar on taxing 60% of the employee provident fund corpus if withdrawn is now behind us. But it's important to note that this move was also driven by the agenda of bringing the national pension system at par with EPF by making both partially taxable. Now what is NPS? It's open to all the Indians who want to save all Indians pardon me who want to save for their retirement. One can invest in NPS throughout the working life and withdraw 60% of the money and use the rest of the corpus to buy an annuity to draw a regular pension on retirement at 60 this was how it was prior to this budget so after 1st april you can now withdraw just 40% and 60% of it goes back for 60% of it goes back into annuity now my question navneet is that uh, How does it stack up now? Uh, till last year, all experts and analysts were saying, "Why would you put an NPS? Your corpus is going to be taxed, so you might as well take a 15-year equity mutual fund product, a diversified product, which is completely tax-free and would probably give you a possibility of higher returns as well." Is it now a more level playing field? So la larger point I will make is that of course I think we 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 need to do a lot more work on improving the retirement security and it is not only the poor even the affluent don't have the proper retirement security the way financial planning should be done uh, across the population so we we need to work a lot and then we need uh, uh, proper vehicles for that as you rightly said mutual funds have got a long term. Record our, for example, our Magnum Equity Fund for 25 years, the kind of alpha that it has generated. Uh, similarly, I mean, any investor, whether in a balanced fund which has around 65, 70% in equity and 30% in fixed income, can create a portfolio of mutual funds and can can derive those returns over a longer period. There could be other platforms also. Over a period of time, I think some of these uh, tax incentives should be extended to other platforms which have got a long-term track record of of delivering very good returns. Mm -hmm. I'm what do you think see nps um i would agree with the new announcements which have been made are really good they, mm -hmm. they really make nps a better product but somebody has to do a due diligence of understanding epf versus nps what are they suited for what are the distinguishing product characteristics mm -hmm. one is for making a sustainable pension income the other one is for building a tax efficient lump sum corpus it should not be 
propose that both the products are competing with each other. Mm -hmm. There should be two separate distinguishing products which are being supported by the government. Okay, so, so EPS and NPS, NPS, it should not be nudge the money now to a EP, a NPS. If these are different aims. Okay, between NPS and other mutual funds, now tell me, right. how does it work See, out? If you, if you want a very easy way and low cost way of earning money as a pension form in your retirement period, NPS is any day a winner. Okay. But if you if you want a more actively better alpha returns of your accumulated corpus and if you can rope in an advice to help you do that, then mutual funds would any day beat NPS. You know, NPS is low cost um, uh, product for people who don't want complexity in their lives. Mutual funds is little more complex, but if you have a person who can train you, help you coach, manage that money, mutual funds would any day be preferred. The returns on the mutual funds have been much stronger mm -hmm. in the last 20 years compared to NPS. But NPS, NPS doesn't have that longer history. That's correct. As well. So, uh, so I'm also expecting NPS to go through some so maturity so, cycles. Uh, and, and I think from, from the perspective of people just feeling that it's it's uh, it's a disciplined product, once I start it, you have to put in a minimum of 6,000 rupees right. and you know, it just inculcates that sort of a discipline. Okay. In the last union budget, Krishan, an additional tax deduction of 50,000 rupees under Section 80 CCD on the contributions to NPS was also announced. Does that continue? Yes. That continues. That continues. So, so that fifty thousand at least should go to NPS. What do you I think? I can, I can still make more money if I do not look for the tax saving and invest that fifty thousand. So, saying pay the tax, tax take it out, yeah. and then still look at a balanced fund. Balanced fund or NPS. a multi-cap fund. If I have a horizon of twenty-one years, see the lock-in of twenty-five, thirty years is a long time. In mm -hmm. equity, I can still withdraw money three years later, five years later, and move into a better performing fund. So, as I said, if I have a active portfolio management skills or I can rope in somebody who can help me do actively portfolio management, hmm. NPS would probably not be in my list at all. Okay. Final word from you. Is there anything that we've missed out which is also relevant from, from a person's investments and savings, Krishan? One important thing as you would have seen that the government was out with their scheme on the gold monetization scheme 2015, mm -hmm. where government thought that those who are holding huge, you know, the gold as we see in our Indian houses, why this money is lying in the lockers, why this gold is lying in the lockers, they wanted to incentivize by coming out with this scheme. But we did not see the success in this scheme. So I think the government, what they have done is because of lack of clarity, they clarified now and it's in a very welcome um, amendment where they are saying that any interest which you receive on the deposits, on the gold deposits under that scheme or as and when you wanted to in cash by selling mm -hmm. it in the market, there would be a long term, you know, the capital gain. Now they have clarified to say that you will not have to pay any taxes on the long term capital gains as well as on the interest. So okay. I am sure by Will this encourage more people to bring gold in the gold monetization scheme? Krish? I think so. Certainly probably we will have to see the response. Still there are certain doubts people may have and I think the government is committed to make it more transparent so that people should not have any uh, confusions in Confusion terms of but, but I think it is a good step and mm -hmm. it should really incentivize people to go for it. Alright, now we final word from you. How confident are you? I mean, there was a uh, there was a divergence in opinion between Amit and you on, on, on the outlook to equity markets, but, but you are extremely confident that this is the time to bulk up a little bit on your equity portfolio? I think so. As, as Buffett says, I mean, you have to be greedy when others are fearful and you have to be fearful when others are greedy. I think there is a lot of fear on the street, not only in India, but globally. But I think looking at the uh, economy and if you believe that corporate profitability has bottomed out, valuations have improved because of the correction in the market, there would surely be volatility, but one should take advantage, not get swayed by it. So I think there is a good time to invest some money from a longer term perspective. Okay. Thank you so much, Navneet Manoj. Amit and Krishan for coming in today for Let's Talk Money. And for all our viewers, if you've got a portfolio or an investment question, you can write in to us at money at ndtv.com and keep updated with all that's happening in personal finance on our Twitter handle and FP page. Thank you so much for joining me. See you soon.